scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. While still standing, I'd just like us to honor again the angels of this house, Apostle Oko and his dear, precious, precious wife. God bless you. Bless you. I love and I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, let me just, maybe just a word or two. Um, Colin, you are amazing. I Believe me, believe me. I love people, but um, I guess because um, it's, I'm not easily impressed, believe me. Believe me. I could just laugh, but um, it takes a lot. Hallelujah. But, but while, while, while I sat there, just, just his humility of heart right from the office, and then that worship look you have to teach me south african language you have to come on down i need i need a lesson teacher i'm ready to learn hallelujah praise the name of the lord but we love you your work is amazing your work is amazing, amazing. hallelujah and then pastor kyla that's kaya where's he oh he's gone um, I, was, I, was, I was happy to see him. His songs have um, been a blessing to us even in the ministry. And it's just good. I just wanted to tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe that what you are about to hear this morning will truly change you forever. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Give us understanding, oh God, in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let's get to work. Let's start with Proverbs 23 and verse 26. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. Praise the Lord. The preacher is teaching here and he says, My son, just a little volume keyboardist god bless you my son he says give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways the first instruction is give me your heart i don't trust you till i have your heart i don't trust your vulnerabilities until i have your heart then he says when you're done giving me your heart the next instruction is let your eyes observe my ways because the secret of dominion is in understanding the ways of God hallelujah I have said it again and again we're talking about living a life of excellence this church is a testimony of something that has been done right remember the sacrifice of Cain and Abel when Cain came and met the Lord and began to complain and the Lord told him, paraphrasing, if you had done it right, wouldn't it be accepted? The Bible says, the same Lord is rich unto all, so there are no biases in God. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. It's up to you to choose. So he says, give me your heart. And then let your eyes observe my ways. Believers are blessed to the degree to which they understand the ways of God. I will continue to say this. 
every the kingdom of god is a compendium of limitless possibilities but they are controlled by exact knowledge there is an exact body of spiritual knowledge that is responsible for restoration responsible for lifting responsible for speed responsible for prosperity responsible for influence we are not listen look at me when it has to do with working with god creativity is not required you just obey the precepts have been laid you are not given the liberty to guess your way around no it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that's where your creativity comes in but as far as following god is concerned the path has the bible says jeremiah 6 16 now uh, please give it to us jeremiah 6 and verse 16 it says thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways south africa and see and ask for the old path the old path is not a denomination's path the old path is the ancient precepts of god the mystery that made man it says where is the good way and walk therein and then you will enter your sabbath hallelujah so the things that we share and and, and and this is one of the reasons why I I love I love your man of God and the wife it is important that the truths that we share um, that we find their applicability in our lives it's completely useless to continue to consume knowledge that does not have applicability spiritually and then sociologically speaking I should be able to see what role the truth i am receiving can play in my life here and now not every spiritual information is useful as far as your relevance in this kingdom is concerned that's why john began to teach i mean jesus was teaching as recorded by john he said in john 16 he says i have many things to tell you now but ye cannot bear them he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you you must be guided hallelujah truth is like a knife it depends on how you hold it it can kill you hallelujah and so as we explore the mysteries of the kingdom i call them it is important for us to understand that these principles are exact in delivering their results there is a precision to their operation they deliver to precision the difference between a chef and someone who is just a freelance cook is precision precision they can tell you what will happen and make it happen precision hallelujah and so I'm trusting that at the end of this conference that many gaps in our lives and our spiritual experiences will be so closed that you can know what result what what spiritual law leads to what outcome this is what maturity is about spiritual growth and maturity is measured by two indices number one is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the christ that is the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth the degree to which you conform in experience to the image and the character of the Christ. The second index is your depth of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus is teaching still an extension of what we know as the Beatitudes. And he said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, he says the mysteries of the kingdom the word know there does not just mean to be aware it's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife paul calls it fellowship with the mystery so that you become one are we together my greatest fear in life is not satan my greatest fear in life is believing a lie He says be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can believe a lie for many years and then painfully find out after investing decades of your life that you were wrong 
and so i'm not ashamed every time i come before his presence i want him to vet my understanding to find out that what i believe and i communicate to the nations is accurate that after 30 years we will still stand upon that conviction as the things most surely believed so what you are learning this morning is powerful listen this in my opinion is about the greatest revelation as far as influence and dominion is concerned that god taught me second only to my encounter with god it takes love to share certain things because the bible says to not cast your pearl before swine there are dimensions of spiritual truth that come with blood and pain and tears and everyone who truly understands it will treasure it but then in an atmosphere like this it is safe to let it out from the depth of your heart so that the saints be edified are we blessed amen i have watched with shock and wonder please look at me i have watched well-intentioned well-meaning people become crippled as far as their influence and their rising to the highest levels of life is concerned i have watched people educated and uneducated alike i have watched great preachers great business people i have watched you know very mighty people with all kinds of advantages around them and yet they fail to rise to become all that God designed them to be. And for many years, I kept asking the question, why do doors close for others and open for others? Why do people remain limited for many years? Well-meaning, tongue-talking, born again, genuine, sincere, but limited. I've seen many hard-working diligent people remain poor remain broke they struggle they pray they struggle things don't go well i've seen well-intentioned preachers they fast they pray they are sincere they love the lord but they never 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 their influence will never cross their local environment and i wanted to know why and i found it because everyone that seeketh find it if you don't find it's because you did not seek enough remember i taught you yesterday that everything you seek is also looking for you hallelujah and i found it in a very powerful mystery that i will be sharing with you and i pray in the name of jesus that this tonight or today will change your life forever the law of honor open our eyes and give us wisdom in the name of Jesus the kingdom of God is built on laws laws here does not just mean Old Testament laws is just a generic name to mean precepts and ordinances are we together that the kingdom of God operates based on precepts and ordinances that means that every dimension of grace is activated by recognizing and applying certain keys let me repeat every dimension of grace is activated by recognizing and applying certain keys and one of these laws that is responsible for the mysterious lifting of men is called the law of honor again let me tell you that the kingdom of god operates based on the law of seed time and harvest remember that as far as the earth remains seed time and harvest it wasn't necessarily talking about money that means everything you want is a harvest and that it will never come until you sow the seeds that produce it are we together listening is the seed for learning when you sow the seed of a listening ear you will get the harvest of information a question is the seed for an answer are we blessed hmm. knowledge is the seed for transformation 
when you want to be transformed the seed that you sow to your mind and your spirit is knowledge are we together yes productivity generally speaking and value are the seeds for financial rewards that means if you do not have a system that consistently brings you financial rewards it is because you did not sow the seed of value and productivity are we together now yes honor is a seed and the harvest it produces is access honor is the key that opens doors doors that multiply your influence doors that multiply your relevance the key that will open the door to the heart of a generation the key that will open the door to captains of industry honor write this down please all failures in life can be traced to dishonor all with no exception all failures in life can be traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles all failure without exception can be traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles what then is honor i want to be as simple as possible before we pray write this down please honor is the discerning the celebration and the rewarding of uniqueness of usefulness of excellence honor is the discerning it starts with discernment honor is the celebration honor is the rewarding of uniqueness of usefulness of excellence the fortitude to discern the fortitude to celebrate the fortitude to reward a person for his uniqueness for his value and for the excellence that is communicated is called honor are we together now so honor has to do with discernment you first have to discern uniqueness you have to discern value you have to discern excellence let's define this honor what then is this honor this honor is the trivializing of value of usefulness to dishonor means to trivialize value to trivialize usefulness to dishonor means to take for granted to dishonor means to lightly esteem are we still together first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 blessed be the name of the lord first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 ready wherefore the lord god of israel saith i said in thee that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord saith be it far from me let's read the rest together for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me to dishonor means to trivialize to di to dishonor means to downplay importance please understand this this is the plague of africa this is the plague of many 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 people the bible is full of men and women who rose to the top because they understood honor and the bible is full of men and women who fell from the top because of dishonor 
many examples but we do not have all the time today i will only take you to the book of esther the bible starts by giving us an interesting story the book of esther is very interesting because there's no mention of a man of god and the warrior in that book was a woman are we together the book was not called the book of ahasuerus it's called the book of esther the bible is named after two women in scripture you know two women found their place two books in scripture are named after women and for the same reason honor listen very carefully you will now know why doors have refused to open or you will know why the door that opened yesterday is now closed today hallelujah the bible lets us know that there was once a man called Ahasuerus. Are we together? Esther chapter 1. And then the Bible tells us that this man, see, the Bible takes out time to meticulously flaunt his achievements. Scripture is not careful about this man's achievements, that he was a captain over about 127 provinces. Now, whoever can gain influence over 127 provinces deserves a round of applause. Because kings in those days, they didn't just get, it was not, you, you didn't just um, give them things by luck. They fought, they were warriors. They conquered territories to become kings. Here is this man called Ahasuerus, a king over 127 provinces. Then the Bible says that there was this woman that sat by his side called Vashti. Are we together now? And then the Bible said that it was the custom of kings in those days to flaunt their glory and then to flaunt their wives. You know, just as a way of um, showing the excellency of their kingdom. And then at one time, Esther began to, I mean, um, Vashti began to create her own cabinet. And the king sent for Esther, I mean, sent for Vashti. And Vashti would not come. And the king said, wow, she's forgotten that she was only queen because she married a king. Let me teach you something no matter how close you are to greatness never forget that you are standing before greatness no matter how close yes are we together now this is very very powerful this is why those who are close to great people never rise because by reason of interacting with greatness again and again the side effect is that dishonor can be sown i've seen him eating i mean we sleep on the same bed for husband and wife i mean you come to my restaurant all the time you are my boss i'm your secretary i watch you when you are in pain i watch you when you are awake and the door is not the man that closes the door is the law that closes the door the man may love you and desire that the door remains open but the door is closed please listen very carefully and then the king being a very good man shelved the issue but the elders came and said king you are in a position where whatever you do will be received and practiced all over the province this woman has communicated dishonor now look at this my god everything is in place in the palace but because of this honor the kingdom is about to divide not because the treasures were missing not because the guards were not there look how dangerous this honor is a palace is still in place but one woman's dishonor is about to wreck a kingdom and the elder said no way this woman will have to go as a deterrent to other women now it's not about gender i hope you understand the, the whole the idea vashti never said sorry vashti never begged it was proof that her dishonor was intentional there's no record in scripture of vashti coming to the king and say i'm sorry i think i was i was just carried away we can't talk no she left and left with joy 
it was Vashti that strengthened the activity of her man in the palace you would be learning if you study that book properly her man seemed to gain some level of ascendance and he became close to the king because of the ministry of this strange woman called Vashti now Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy in the palace listen carefully the book of Esther shows how to rise from anywhere to anywhere the Bible says listen to me it says that a call was made all through Shushan the entire province including Shushan and Mordecai sitting at the gate hears that the king is looking for a wife then he goes to fetch a little girl called Hadassah powerless but powerful she comes and stands with other people and he's teaching her if you can understand honor you will rise to any level now cut the long story short she becomes queen and while she's queen her man is plotting the annihilation of the jews are we together now that she was the only person who had access listen be careful when you dishonor those who have the access you need there are times you cannot get to the gate you will need the recommendation of the person already at the gate now listen carefully esther comes to the king and does what he so craved for that vashti refused to do her man is plotting to kill the jews she would have walked to the king and she fasted and walks to the king and says oh king live forever he lifts the golden censer a risk she took and says queen what's the problem why are you at my inner chamber without me calling for you and she said oh king i'm only here because i am here to flaunt your glory i have contemplated on your excellence paraphrasing and i need to let the nations know i'm trying to put a celebration for you and the king says who is this who did i marry yet her reason was to command victory and she uses she does not come to say there is a friend you have called her man no the king would drive her away she uses honor and the king says put the feast he said may i request that her man also join that feast so honor can kill honor is a dangerous weapon of mass destruction her man is in that feast and the king is so happy and blessed and then the king says do it again do it again my queen make that feast again you are recognizing and discerning what i represent i've always wanted to let people know that i was a great king and now do it again and then she did it again and the third time i'm rushing the book while all that is happening there's already a plot happening her man had collected the permission to destroy the jews and then the bible says she organized a feast called the feast of wines and the king drank and he was happy and then he says what do you want let me tell you it's a law that when people are kind to you and you do not respond you will be restless you see that that the moment people communicate certain dimensions of benevolence and you ignore them and you do not say thank you you will not be at peace and the king had to say look what, what do you want you have to tell me something it can't be indefinite that you're doing all this thing to me and she said well king there is a threat in this kingdom who threatens a woman who has vowed to bring me honor and she said do you really want me to tell you that person say it says her man and the king was touched a wise king because wise men don't act swiftly i mean they don't act carelessly he went to the garden to think and while he was there you see eh, when god is against you anything will fight you yeah. her man is on his knees finally to beg the queen and then the king comes and sees her in a position that looks like she was trying he was trying to rape her and said not only have you dishonored me you still now want to and he said look go and hang this man 
honor hung her man. Honor lifted Mordecai. Mordecai saved the king. It was recorded, but he was not rewarded. And one night, just like it will happen to someone here, that the book of remembrance was opened. And he said, what shall be done to a man? You raise many people in your life who now act as though you did not raise them. I, listen, let me tell you this. It's a big mistake. There are many parents here. You raise people who were not your children. And today they act as though your contribution to their lives were just one of the many things. Be patient. The justice system of God will fish you out for honor. There are many pastors across Africa who have labored over people, raised them, mentored them, built them and now the people get, they get built and they act as though nothing ever happened to them dishonor is dangerous there are many ceos who raised and mentored many young people some of them came as cleaners and they were privy to conversations that began to culture their understanding and now they had become great people and they come to the man and oh, i'm a ceo you are a ceo hi how are you dishonor is dangerous Are we blessed? So honor is the discerning, celebrating the rewarding of uniqueness. You have to understand this. That every door that closes, closed because of this honor. When I came to this ministry the first thing that touched me was the understanding of honor right from the protocol right from the airport i said no apostle felix is an excellent man he has taught his people well they understand honor listen have you seen preachers who go to certain places and it's as though they were not anointed this honor closed that door including Jesus he went to certain cities and could not do anything because they said is this not the carpenter's son the Bible says he that receives a prophet that means a prophet is not only a prophet a prophet is many things a prophet is a brother to family members a prophet is an uncle to certain people a prophet may be a businessman are we together but that men are dimensional and the, the dimension you honor is the dimension that supplies whatever grace. For instance, if I am a CEO and I am a man of God and I am a brother, if you honor the CEO, you will get contracts. You will not get the anointing. The CEO is not the one who releases graces. I will give you wisdom. If you honor the brother, what you are going to get is information about the state of the family. That's a brother's reward. That men are multidimensional and you must discern what they represent. Elijah had sons of the prophet. The next prophet should come out of them because they were in the school of the prophet. But they were already used to him and I'm sure they were offended by his temperament. And then a young farmer who had no business being a prophet sees this man and discerns this is not an ordinary man do you know the kind of temper elijah had and elijah said if you like be as temperous as was ever i will follow patiently it takes a lot to receive impartation it takes more than kneeling down it takes more than dropping a seed oh no you can kneel down and yet you are standing up. You can speak good and yet it is not true. Are you getting what I'm saying? I have watched this destroy businesses and ministries across Africa. Dishonor. The trivializing 
of the investment of the spirit upon people there are many people today who cannot rise in business because every businessman is their colleague a man tells you that he came to south africa having nothing and in five years he's now the ceo of a company with branches everywhere does that sound ordinary to you does that sound normal to you why trivialize it then what is the big deal we say what is there in being a ceo i can be a ceo and the door closes there are many men of god who listen to the tapes of other men of god in secret and never receive anything because the door of honor was already closed please hear what i'm telling you this honor is dangerous is a law that has transited me from one level even to the other honor to god honor to men honor to principles the first time god gave me this revelation was in 2012 or 13 and i preached a message called commanding results that message blessed the body of christ i found the key that was responsible for the retrogression of people i will never see greatness and ignore it no no oh this man is a ceo he owns businesses in the u.s this that oh god bless you sir it's an honor to meet you that you don't sit and say what is there you're a man i'm a man that foolishness you will spend your lifetime paying for it hallelujah every time you find a people a person who can do what you cannot do sustain the discernment to see listen to me very carefully there are people today apostle who cannot raise two children and yet there is one mama somewhere in south africa with 11 children and all of them are responsible there is a grace there she may not be educated but there is a grace you can honor your way to family stability listen now let me teach you something consistency is proof that you are not working by mistake you 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 cannot be consistent in anything in business in ministry by mistake nobody wins the olympic by mistake you can run by mistake but you don't win by mistake how many people desire certain graces and certain anointings and yet they act as if it is not important how many people desire certain levels of wisdom and yet they see a man's book and say oh he's written another book i hope what is there is really sound and the person who is talking has not gone anywhere at all it's as though there is an addiction to trivialize people in Africa now listen and I'm saying this respectfully I hope you understand let me tell you this and it is not necessarily because we are bad people it is not necessarily because we are evil people is the side effect let me teach you something about success because you see success is based on laws and it's very difficult to be sustainably successful and most people will find comfort giving excuses sometimes justifiably so so the moment you become successful you judge the excuses that people have and so naturally there will be a side effect and the only comfort and succor they can find is to downplay your relevance they don't do it because they hate you they do it to at least manage their frustration the reason why the brothers of joseph hated him was because he was the only one who had a dream if they all had dreams they will be colleagues dreamers on their way <laughs> the disciples kept looking at james and john and saw the way they were close to jesus and then one day the mother of james and john came to lobby a position for her sons i mean don't blame the woman any responsible woman seeing a visionary man will want to create space 
and then the disciples heard it and they said finally you see you see what we've been saying that these guys were here together laboring together whereas they are going <laughs> behind to just lobby a position and jesus looked at them and said the positions are vacant but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism listen every great man in this room every great man in this church every great man in this nation paid a price that only few people will ever imagine the price of diligence the price of of prayer the price of tears people lost millions of runs to learn the lessons they give cheaply there are ceos that failed and failed and failed and failed again until there was nowhere to go and and they started learning by themselves people rose unassisted the systems were against them the structures were against them they prayed they fought and now god had honored them and here comes someone who casually says what is there and the door closes there are people who trivialize god and the door of his help and mercy closes who is god they say what is god they say and they equate god to money they equate god to education dishonor there are those who trivialize men listen let me tell you this we are all equal in christ but we are not equal in grace it's a it's an uncomfortable truth and it's not meant to create some kind of a false sense of superiority one above another but i am saying that we are equal in christ watch this but the sacrifice of alignment are we together now and our our different levels of press into the things of the spirit has separated us into spiritual cadres with different dimensions and levels of possibilities there's one person in South Africa in this church whose signature can answer your prayer of 10 years why have they not blessed you listen challenges are not generic there are people who have conquered that realm it is true I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never dishonor platforms I will never dishonor men of God I place value on people it's a mistake that we have made even as men of God so when I come and you all clap for me you all celebrate me I've been touched by how much you love and honor me but I must reciprocate it I know you honor me but there are things you have that I do not have I must discern it I don't need to ask you for it my honoring you will allow the grace to come upon me so i listen i will be the most foolish preacher that has stood on this platform if i leave empty no i give you what i have but i leave full too hmm. jesus looks at little children and sees a level of sincerity he wants in children that adults don't have and he says let the little children come to me the adults will say no 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 you are busy you are too he said let them come for such let me use them to teach adults a lesson that until you maintain this kind of posture you are not ready to do business with god wise men learn from everything they learn from animals please hear what i'm telling you it may be the reason why your company is grounded you can sit down for one hour through honor and someone will share with you his pain of 20 years and in two months the turnover of your corporation will shock you this honor can peg a man for many years hallelujah hallelujah are we blessed when your dear people coordinating the service when they stand here and honor your man and your woman of god i'm sure that many of you just think it's a ritual must they honor them are we not i mean do we dishonor them i mean you should know that let's let's please continue the service quickly and let apostle carry the mic and start teaching you see 
let me tell you what that does no matter what prayer comes here it will not work for you there is a law of reception you must discern who is this man who is this woman not in the flesh what grace brought this result is it common should i trivialize it and you come to a conclusion based on intelligent contemplation that there must be an ability at work in this man and his wife that is not common and you submit to that understanding and the portals of their grace opens up to you even if they don't speak over your life right there in your room you will find out that you begin to reproduce possibilities listen there are people who I have never met physically but the depth of honor they have for me they have almost reproduced the grace of God upon my life right there in their rooms did you know that I listen to my own teachings every day and when I listen to my own teachings when Apostle Joshua Selman is about to pray I don't stand and say I'm hearing myself I say Lord as this man is praying I receive listen sit down let me teach you something do you know why many men of God are not blessed by their own grace because the anointing hear me honor is not human worship I, there's a lot of nonsense going on that's not what I'm talking about please don't confuse what we're dealing with here not just human worship you know no 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 a recognition the grace that comes on a man as touching his office is for everybody including him if he will submit to it so you can be dying and yet giving life until you discern that that grace when i listen to my teachings believe me i don't listen and repeat myself i listen with an open heart and i hear what i did not hear even while i was preaching listen how many husbands come two people any two well don't carry anybody's wife please husband a, a a man and a woman or husband and wife don't don't come here with anybody's wife husband and wife come stand here stand here god bless you watch this do you know real value is not physical and that if i give you watch this can i break that too now watch this everybody this is your hand if i give you some money hold this give some to your wife if i give all to your wife <laughs> take this now watch this if you have physical money people say you are rich or you are blessed that's not true this is giving evidence to what is on you are you getting what i'm saying now human god stores his possibilities in men learn what i want to teach you there is no man that is empty there are human beings carrying mysteries that they themselves do not know now listen carefully this woman can carry favor that came from the blessings of her grandfather he did business with god and god covenanted that all your children they will multiply now she does not even know sit down let me teach you something that's why i said honor starts with discernment here comes this man he marries this woman and he does not know why he starts to rise even her she does not know why someone just starts a relationship with you and in two weeks he got a job and he says you're a good woman no you too you say you are you don't know that something on you please listen to me hmm. I share with you the mysteries of the kingdom now this man is rising and he's doing well and do you know that although she's his wife she still has that spiritual component that represents an advantage a day can come in his life this man you see may love her as his wife but dishonor her as touching the grace God gave her. When it has to do with that grace, he will go down. Although they are married, although they are having children together, 
it will take the man now to say look you are my wife but i've discerned your dreams every time you have a dream it gives me direction the last 10 years of my life was correct because of your dream please i submit to that grace i am your husband but dream again now watch this this woman can be broke this man can be broke yet every prophetic word is increasing the members in his church because they have not submitted to that grace the day the woman says i know you are my husband let me tell you a story it's a true story many of you have heard it in my teachings a man of god's family was going down financially whereas he was blessing members testimonies people were coming with all kinds of testimonies one day just like a service like this imagine that your, the service is going on and then first lady just gets up and walks out of this place you know people would talk and say we hope things are fine she left and went home after the service he counseled quickly and rushed back home my wife what is wrong did i offend you she didn't say a word he just sat down at table to eat and he noticed she was bringing his meal did i offend you we can talk about this i mean what we've been married for a long time let's not get into all of this and she wouldn't say a word she served him and he noticed the plates women you know those plates you, yeah she brought it out oh. and she served the man and then she came dropped his bottle of water and got down and said servant of God my family is in need of a breakthrough listen the husband looked at her he said suddenly that same anointing he felt in church that refuses to come home because of dishonor that same anointing and he stretched his hand and spoke and God opened that family listen hear me listen there are many pastors whose relatives have never benefited from that grace because to them he's a brother or a sister listen to me only God knows what this man carries only God knows what this woman carries the day you discern what she carries you will carry the grace the day you discern what he carries the law of honor listen listen to me Two people can be even in the same room. There are people in South Africa who will never go out of a job for more than six months. There is a grace on them that they cannot even explain why. Someone must lose his job for them to be there. The grace does not allow them to be without it. Now, if you begin to see that kind of result, you should know. Even if the carrier does not know. And here you are his roommate or flatmate and every time you see people calling him do you want a job and you are there praying hoping and nothing is working one night you can look at him and say look you are my friend we grew up from the same street but today I do not want to talk to my friend I want to talk to the career of that grace right there although you are friends he can even say casually god bless you and that's it the door is open are you hearing what i'm saying now so this couple you can find out just an example maybe these ones have just one or two children and it's difficult for them to train the children stubborn children you say left they go right you say sleep they jump up you know all kinds of things trouble and headache that they give you and here is a family with 12 children all of them are obedient godly the first child is a pastor second child a ceo third child a doctor fourth child a professor there is a grace now listen very carefully 
if this man and this woman even though they are friends if they discern one night they can visit them and they just see them carrying something a hamper say, how are you let's eat and when they are done eating can say look i came here with my wife because i have watched you for 25 years you have never quarreled with your wife all your children look like princes we have come to receive that grace so that where we failed our children will not fail listen just for that honor even if these people say no 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 we will not pray it's too late it has come already watch this come Colin, come quickly come many of you are just come shoes or no shoes just, just watch this many of you are in the music ministry many of you are trusting God for open doors many of you want the nation of South Africa to accept and receive your grace but here is a man look at the song i'm not south african but when i heard the song i said i must play this song in my car for a while i until i learn it by by repetition i mean that song blessed me praise the lord yesterday before the release was it yesterday or day before yesterday he came while we're having dinner and he came and knelt down and gave me a few of the cities and said to pray and bless him before he would launch it that is honor listen now I spoke to his I spoke over his album I said I give it wings in the spirit let it go far now please listen I prayed for him together with his father tomorrow you will hear that this man is sharing the stage with certain people and other people will say he was just lucky that's what we say are you seeing now someone in this crowd someone watching is praying and fasting and saying oh god when will the nations hear my songs why don't i receive songs let me tell you you can package a seed and drop it and still not receive anything it starts with discernment what came on this man that brings him songs in the night I've been trying to compose a song you will say for one year I've not finished it stanza one I'm still there I've, I've been I've, the revelations don't add up and I had to just close the book and here comes a man he's, he's brought an album you can come with honor and say look Colin I love you I know we are friends we laugh around we're all workers but I am not sowing to you as a person I submit to the grace that gave you this influence he may just laugh and just say god bless you but you will be surprised that night as you go to sleep you will watch yourself on stage singing songs and get up and that becomes the song everyone will sing in south africa cheap victories that pride and dishonor stops people from stepping into praise the lord and even as I'm standing, I'm saying it again. And truly, I prophesy to you from the depth of my heart. Not only the nation of South Africa, the globe will hear your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. The question I want to ask you now. Who have you dishonored that is responsible for your stagnation? What principle whose company do you pass every day and just laugh and say can you imagine this man he doesn't even speak english and yet he has 500 staff that should even make you wonder why a man cannot speak a south african language cannot even speak english and yet he had 500 staff what grace brought them are we blessed when i learned this principle my life changed my life changed completely because 
I am, I am like a spiritual archaeologist. I search and discern graces, genuine graces. I sat down to eat with your, your dear man of God and his wife and I looked at the, the beauty, the glory of her heart. I said, Lord, it is not, I, I must ship this grace so that all the women I know in our ministries will reflect this grace. Yeah. Now, listen, you can be in this church for 10 years and not carry the grace. And a stranger will come in one day. That's why strangers are the most blessed in many churches. Because before they arrive there, they come with hunger. They come with a depth of recognition. When I traveled, like some of your, some of you here who okay, came, maybe guests and members, some of you have been uh, to our ministry. I think I spotted one or two of of them somewhere, and the sheer sacrifice. It is honor. Your man of God was not always this way. A day came, a grace came on him. Do you recognize it? It is true that many men of God have stood on this platform. But what dimension of their grace have you received? Or was it just a ritual? It's amazing how many people have rubbed shoulders with graces and yet nothing came on them. Oh, I was the one who served Benihin food. I was the one who served this one food. In fact, I did a high five with him and you are still like this? going to pray I thank God for what he has made out of my life but I do not trivialize people and that includes you yes it is the reason why I appreciate you when I stand here it's not just a ritual to preach I do not know what is sitting down there I do not know what grace there are some of you because of certain covenants that your loved ones had with God God vowed that you will never beg even when you are not giving you usually should beg but the covenant covers you it's a grace hallelujah some of you this has run away from you continually no matter what you do no matter how you call it find out the person it is running to and honor that person because everything runs from somewhere to somewhere once upon a time this thing will not come to me you cry, you call it, it will refuse. Listen, when I got to this point in my life, I said, no, things have to change. I remember a great man of God. I carried a seed and I traveled down. And when I sowed that seed, please listen. Um, you, well, you may, you may just hold on. We'll, we'll allow a time for that, except you're just sowing here, but please just so that you don't waylay the man of God and his wife but I'm showing you a powerful principle when I sowed that seed I came out and the Holy Ghost told me put your hands on the floor right there and he says from this day you have entered the overflow anointing when I tell you I'm a product of many anointings even though I have seen Jesus even though I live in the realm of encounters, it still was not an excuse to dishonor the body. The reason why the doors of nations open is because I will never stand on anybody's pulpit and trivialize their grace. 
and trivialize the people who are there no matter how you honor me i will honor you back someone after service right now you need to run back home and go to your mother and say mama you raised us without education that grace let it come on me i'm tired of loitering around as a master's holder with no open doors and mama will say what happened you say i came to excel 2020 i learned a mystery this is why doors have not opened it is not only your man of god that you should honor alone as important as it is you may need to turn to your friend and say we are workers in the same unit but i have noticed every time they want to give an appointment it is you there is a grace can i take you out for lunch just to honor that grace listen to me there are people who desire this grace and yes this anointing you see but then they will trivialize it what is there i think he's just lucky to be anointed if i tell you the story of my life and the sacrifices that this grace sits upon you may weep in this place behind every glory truly there is a story Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.